I am so glad that you're all here to learn a bit more about SQL. Even if you're not a SQL user, you're just like, I don't even know what SQL is. Uh, you know you're affected by it. We're all affected by these queries, just like David brought out uh, during the, the introduction where he said he went to the bank and, and waited. We've all experienced that wait at either a bank or we're at the Home Depot and checking out or we're at the, the grocery store and, they're, and the, the, the person standing there trying to make it work says, I don't know why it's going so slowly. And well, most of us data people know why it's going so slowly. There's so much going on, so many queries, so many transactions being uh, executed at the same time, it can slow things down. Of course, other things can slow things down as well, in, in, including the weather. So, uh, but what can, what? We do? what can we do to ensure that our, our queries, if we're writing our own queries that other people are gonna use, are, are the most efficient and also, um, Think about this, if we write a query that is uh, as efficient as we think it needs to be, and we run the query and it takes literally uh, a minute or two minutes to run, and you might think, well, that's not all that long, but when our queries are running ineffective, in inefficiently, um, we're effectively slowing everybody else's queries down as well. So when we add it all together, let's say my query could have been 10 seconds faster. 10 seconds, what, what's the big deal, Tom? Well, during that 10 seconds, I'm actually slowing the server down for everybody else during those 10 seconds when my query could have been 10 seconds faster. So I'm actually affecting them as well during those 10 seconds. Do you see how it compounds and just loads up the system so very quickly? It's a lot like a freeway. We're all going at 30, 40, 50, 60, even 70 miles an hour. One car slows down or has a flat or something, everybody slows down and it becomes very frustrating. So this is what happens, same thing with SQL. So join me now for the next 25 minutes and I'm gonna share with you a couple of key things that can help all of our SQL queries. And again, you're probably thinking, Tom, I, I don't write SQL queries. How does this affect me? Well, I'm so glad you're here and watching anyways because it's always good to know how it works and why it works the way it does. So uh, with our understanding, we have less frustration when things don't go exactly th the way we want them to go. So understanding, that's great. SQL, fun stuff. Using it, well, if you're a data guy like me, it's it just sends chills up and down your spine because data and queries are fun. So we're gonna talk about a few key uh, areas of uh, data queries that are going to speed up uh, queries in general, and also a few things that are very, very specific as well. So you'll uh, notice our first main topic here for our webinar together is uh, how to speed up our queries when we write them. And we can do so in one of four ways based on this discussion. There's hundreds of other ways to speed up a query. And this is really, really very basic stuff. I hand selected these four ways because they're the most effective that we can all take advantage of, such as order by. What do I mean by order by? That's how we say in SQL, sort. So it's the quickest fix for slowness, that's for sure. And then um, who needs all the data? All the data in the database, who needs that? But yet that's what we're querying against all the time. Why would I search through millions of records over and over and over again? when I know I'm only need to search through these couple hundred or these couple thousand. We'll show you how to get around that big giant search and have to search just a little bit at a time. What a great idea, right? Clustered and non-clustered, it's a SQL term. Uh, it has to do with indexing. Indexing is something that happens behind the scenes. You don't even, you don't see it, but boy, does it speed up a database query when it's done properly. In fact, we call them index tuning. We tune our indexes to meet the needs of the query and those who are going to be consuming this data. I'm gonna just show you something very, very basic about indexes, but hopefully get your wheel spinning as to how important it is to understand how an index works. And then finally, an extra special bonus, Excel. Oh my gosh, it's still awesome. It always has been awesome. What a great tool. 
well, we can move our data over to Excel and do a lot of work there. Take this, take a lot of weight off the server's shoulders and take the data over to Excel and perform those mundane things like sorting and filtering. Instead of making the server do it all, we can bring it local and just spend the time with our own little world so that we're not affecting everybody else in their world. So it's so important to understand all these things. And let's get started with our first uh, SQL shortcut, if you will, our first SQL feature, which is gonna be sorting. So here I am in SQL Server Management Studio. Studio. You might be using a different uh, tool, but I'm gonna start a new query. And as you can see, uh, once I start sharing my screen, that you're gonna be able to see exactly what, oh, I am sharing my screen. Here we go. Screen share and share, there we go. I didn't see a box around it. So with the SQL Server Management Studio up on my screen, I want to make sure I'm querying the correct database. And I'm gonna be using this Contoso database. Those of you who've been around for a while know all about Contoso and Northwind, yada, yada, yada. That's all good stuff. But let's uh, take a little bit of time here save a little time by me just copying and pasting the query. I don't want you to have to watch me write a query. So I've got one here called uh, order by slowing, not order by slowing, it's order by slowing. So if you're into um, SQL at all, you know that's a command called order by, which basically means sort. I'd like you to notice down here at the bottom of the screen, there's our little SQL timer uh, when we run a query. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the execute button right up there. Watch it execute. I, it's, we can watch it down here executing. We're already ticking into four seconds, five seconds. This is going to be the probably the most uh, boring part of this webinar because I have to have it watch you watch it tick all the way through. Uh, we're up to 14 seconds now. Let's see how many rows it gathers. We're going to wait. We're going to wait patiently. Here it comes. Oh, it was 21 seconds. 21 seconds to gather and display 3.4 million records. And this query, I'm gonna do a control R to get rid of the results pane. This query did not have an order by command. In fact, I had it commented out. That's what the two little dashes are all about here. So I'm going to get rid of those two dashes and re-invoke the order by command. In other words, we're gonna sort. Now, while it's sorting, I want your attention here. While, while it's sorting, I want you to notice how much longer it takes. Remember last time it was 21 seconds? Let's take a look now. I'm gonna click on the execute button and it's executing the query and we'll see it's ticking by over there in the lower right corner. Let's think about it for a moment. Um, if order by is invoked, do you think it's gonna be easier or harder for the server to put things in order? Well, it's obviously gonna be harder because it's gotta look through the whole list to make sure everything's in the proper order before it displays it. So every time it goes through the list, it's checking to make sure these individual items are in the proper order. So this one went up to 27 seconds just because we turned on the order by. So imagine 27 seconds, 21 seconds, that's a difference of six seconds. If we had, oh, let's say 10 queries we run per day that are wasting six seconds, that's 10 times six, so there's 60 seconds. So every one of us, you know, let's say there's 200 of us querying this database, every one of us are wasting at a minimum a minute a day. You take that, multiply times the 12, the 200 people, there's 200 minutes a day being wasted. That's 3.3 hours of wasted time. You might be thinking, Tom, how in the world are we going just counting seconds? This is silly. Well, this is the silliness that data analysts and database um, uh, experts think about every day to make things faster. So organizations that have 100, 200, 300, 5,000 people using the database at one time, Every second counts, and that means money and time. Amazing, right? So by to summarize, our first, our first feature here to help us really understand what we can do to make our queries more effective, don't use order by, don't sort. But Tom, I need it to be sorted. Well, what are we going to do with our data most likely when we're done with it? Move it over to Excel, right? That's what almost all of us do, or we move it over to another system. Isn't that interesting? Sure, we're going to move it to another system. So, yeah, right. <laughs> well, thank you for that, David. It's so important that 
boy, I, I can't even imagine the time we've wasted over the years by creating these inefficient queries. So take the order by out and do it over in Excel. Excel is affecting only you. It's not affecting everybody else on the network when you sort. And you know what? Don't we often, if you're a query writer, think about this now. Think, when I write my queries, do I refine my queries or do I get it right the first time? Almost always we write a query, run it. Oh, we need to change this. We refine it. We run it again. Oh, I would love to format that. We run it again. We refine it. You know, we just ran that query three times, touching 3.4 million records three different times. Oh, now that just multiplied that one, one minute of waste to two minutes of waste to three minutes of waste. You see how it all compounds? Pretty amazing. So that's the order by tip that I wanted to share with you. Here's a quick a true story. I went to an office once, helped them with their queries. They said, you know, this query takes literally over five minutes to run. Is there anything we can do? And I said, well, let's take a look at it. And right on down at the bottom, that's the first place I look, right on down at the bottom, do you have an order buy in there? And sure enough, they did. I said, how important is the ordering for you? And they said, well, not really important at all because we're just gonna reorder it anyways when we get it over to Excel. I said, let's take it out. So we took out the order by command. We executed this query that normally took five or six minutes. The query then ran in less than a minute. It was literally running between 50 and 60 seconds. And they were just astounded by that one simple little trick. So look into it, see about your queries and see if that order by command can help you out. Remember why we're doing all this. We're not doing this just to make queries faster. We're doing this to make queries more efficient across the board for everybody. Yes, you don't wanna be that stalled car on the freeway where you're actually freezing everybody up, slowing everybody down. You don't wanna be that person. People walking through the hallway saying, there he is. There's that guy that slows down the computer all the time. We don't wanna be that person, right? So let's look at another one of our, um, of our little tips here. Remember there was 3.4 million records in this database. I picked a relatively, you know, medium sized database, 3.4 is medium. I'd like to have you notice how I have a special clause in here called the where clause, where we minimize our, our results. We take our results, instead of being 3.4 million results, we say, no, I only want those results that have uh, maybe more than five items in the quantity and that the store channel is called a store rather than being an online or something else. So it's pretty interesting. We've got a, a double criteria here. It's against the same database. It's against the same data set, 3.4 million records. I'd like you to notice what happens when I execute this query. Please watch down here at the time. Ready and set and off we go. Executing the query, there's one, two, three, four seconds, five. Remember it was at 21 and, um, uh, what was it, 21 and 27, something like that, six seconds difference. So we've limited our, our, our scope down to some criteria, which then produced only a 14 second query with 1.8 million records. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? The fewer items to return, the faster the query is going to go. So here's a, a rule of, uh, uh, of absolute, if you will, within queries. Rarely, if ever, will you run a query without some criteria. We have to have criteria so that we don't expose the whole data set, all 3.4 million records, into this query. No, we limit it. Again, back at what we were talking about earlier in our um, slide deck, our presentation, who needs all the data? Does anybody ever need all the data except for maybe the database administrator? That would probably be answer is no. So we're better off always having a where clause. But then again, we go back to that refining thing that we talked about, refining the query. A lot of us will build a query and then we'll refine it and then we'll build a query and we'll refine it and we'll run the query multiple times during our, our refinement exercise. So um, what can we do to make things better? Let's say, for instance, now, the query that this, the results that this query produced right here, 
14 seconds, 1.8 million records. These are the records that we're going to be looking into all the rest of today and all into tomorrow, uh, Friday, uh, these 18, 1.8 million records. This is all we're interested in for this rest of this week. But there's no reason then to continue querying the large database. We could take this query and turn it into something special. We can turn it into a temporary table, which means basically shove all this information into another table, removing it from the 1.8 million, or the, excuse me, the 3.4 million and putting in its own table. And then we'll query that for the rest of the week. Doesn't that sound logical? 3.4 million, 1.8 million. That's gonna be more refined. Let's do that one more time. And let's just change this from greater than to less than five. We'll re-execute that query with an F5, and let's see how long it takes to run this query. Oh, 142,000 records in one second. That's the data set we're looking for. Do you see the impact? 1.8 million down to 142,000. Oh my gosh, so much better. Now we're gonna take this result that we're gonna be querying for the next two days, and we're going to add a line of code in here to our, our query. We're going to say insert. We're going to uh, say insert into, but before I type it in there, I want to talk to you about what I'm talking, what I'm about to do here. When we insert something into a new table, we're basically saying take all these records and insert them into a new table so I can query that table instead. So we just simply put the command into in between these commands. And we tell it which table we're gonna name this, how we're gonna name this temporary table. Let's call it, um, let's call it Tom's data set. Notice I have a pound sign in front of that. That tells it to become a temporary table. Now, how temporary is this temporary table? Simply put, it's gonna exist as long as this query exists. If I close this query, whether I save it or not, doesn't matter. But as soon as I close this query, that temporary table goes away, flushes itself out of the system. So we're not wasting a lot of space in the server by building temporary tables. Isn't that interesting as well? So let's take a look over here under databases. We'll expand that and we'll notice there's some databases that I have, also some system databases. And there's a database here called the tempdb, temp database. And if I expand that, you'll notice there's the temporary tables right there. I'll click and expand. You can see plainly that there are no temporary tables as of yet. So now we'll come back over here to our lovely query that has this new line that says, insert this information into a new table that we can then query. I'll execute this query. Ready, set, execute. And it says, okay, Tom, four, uh, 142,000 rows were affected and shoved into a new temporary table. Let's go check it out, shall we? There's our new temporary table right there. So what good is a temporary table? How does it fit into this whole set of logic that we're trying to do, trying to save time, trying to occupy the server less so that the server freeway runs more smoothly? So we took this 3.8 million records, 3.4 million records. We brought it down to the 142,000 records that we know we're gonna be needing today and tomorrow. And from now on, for the rest of the day, today and tomorrow, we're gonna be querying this, that little teeny table of 142,000 records. Doesn't that sound faster? Absolutely, yes. So let's go ahead and uh, build a quick query just to show you how we would now access or execute against that temporary table. We'll come down here and build another query. We'll say select, all, now the asterisk is wildcard. That means give me all the fields, all the information from, and here's the kicker, everybody, all I have to do is type in a pound sign. There's my new data set. Selecting this and executing that with an F5, you see I get my 142,000 records and it took almost zero seconds. Wow, what a difference that makes. And now I can refine this even further and I can also feel confident of rerunning this query over and over and over and over again without feeling like I'm tying up the server and slowing everybody else down while they're waiting in the teller line, wondering why Tom is taking so long getting his new uh, pin number on his card or whatever it is at the bank. So let's go ahead and do another query and, and uh, pull this together even more accurately. Let's look for um, store key number 43. That's all we're interested in. So we'll come down here and say where, remember I told you this earlier, 
without a where clause, we're going to be querying against the whole data set. Our data set's a lot smaller now, though, but a where clause is always a good idea, where store key is equal to 43. Let's execute this query and see what we get. Well, would you look at that? 390 rows, almost a zero execution time. Yes, you can spend all the time you need right here querying that new data set of 142,000. I can't emphasize this enough. Your temporary tables are just magical. But let's put this into perspective with a group of people. Let's say you're a team lead and you've learned about temporary tables and you've told your whole team, hey team, Tom told me that you can build temporary tables. Let's build a temporary table and query against it as a team so we're not all touching the big database of 3.4 million records. Well, temporary tables are very unique to me and this one query. If we wanted to go that route and share this temporary table with everybody, we have to make it a bit more broad and a bit more um, open to everybody. So instead of creating a temporary table, if you have the rights in your environment, you might want to create a actual permanent table by just removing the pound sign. And all, uh, of course, you'd have to um, check with your database administrator and find out which schemas you're allowed to write to, or you can just find out by trying, but it's better to check first. But uh, where you can write and where you can create stuff outside the temporary world. And if you can, well, you can save your team so much time so that not everybody has to be querying the 3.4 million records or 5.6 million records or 10 million records. Bring it down, share it out. We're saving everybody time. Let's give it a shot. I'll go ahead and select this record, this, uh, this data set. We've just created a new table. Where did it go? Where did it go? Let's go take a look over here on the left-hand side. Right over here, we'll expand our database. We'll expand our tables and let's take a look. We have a new table right there called Tom's data set. Yes, it's a legitimate table now in this database. This is why we want to clean, we want to clean up our messes as well. Don't leave it there. Um, but now it's available for you and your team to query that data over and over and over and over again, occupying that server less and less and less. How cool is that? Yes. Now, when you're done, of course, it's good etiquette to drop your tables. So the command drop table, and we can put in Tom's data set. Good etiquette. You should always drop your tables when you are done. Why not delete? Well, drop is the command we use for getting rid of tables. And you'll notice it's right down there. Bing. I'll slide back up. We'll do a quick little refresh. We'll scroll on back down. You'll see that that table has now been eliminated and we're back into the clean mode. No more messy tables, but it served its purpose for me and perhaps my team. So to summarize this little uh, exercise, we've talked about sorting order by and how it can really speed up your database queries and how it affects everybody else. We've also talked about um, temporary tables as well as permanent tables, how we can query against a smaller data set, which makes it so much, so much nicer. And then finally, right now, I'd like to share with you one more way to speed things up. Didn't I mention earlier that um, Excel is just by far one of the coolest things that ever happened to mankind? I mean, there's water, there's air, and then there's, um, and then there's Excel. So it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So I'd like to share with you this query here again, but I don't want it to be here in SQL Server Management Studio. I need it to be in a more friendly environment such as Excel. So I'm going to add just a couple lines of code above this. And now this is not the only way to do what I'm about to share with you. There's a lot of ways to do everything in SQL Server Management Studio, Studio, but this is called creating a view. We can create a view, a view of the data. By saying create view, I can give it a name. Let's call it a V underscore Tom had fun today. All right, so we'll create a view and we'll say, Create a view as this query right here. Interesting. So I'll go ahead and choose execute. Oop, it says order by clause is invalid. Now, isn't that interesting? If I'm going to take this data 
turn it into a view so I can use it over in Excel? SQL Server Management Studio says, Tom, why are you making me sort it then? Just sort it over in Excel for goodness sakes. Don't make me do it here in SQL Server Management Studio and affect everybody else on the network. It's a dumb idea. So they tell me, Tom, that's not the smartest way to go. Get rid of it. So I've gotten rid of it. I'll now execute this and notice it says the command is completed successfully. Let's go over here to our views and see if our view is there. Yes, there's our view. Now I've only got three more minutes with you. So I'm gonna go over here to Excel straight away. We're gonna go up to the insert, excuse me, the data menu and we'll choose get data from a database, SQL Server database specifically. So once I choose get from a database, SQL Server database, it's gonna to want to know what is the name of your database, Tom? Uh, so my database is called HP guest room backslash SQL express. That's my database server name. Very logical, right? And you'll notice there's all my databases. I'm going to expand Contoso and notice there's my view all my views, oh, that's the one I'm looking for right there. I click on that and then I can come down here and load it directly into Excel or I can tell it to load to our data model in case I have more than 1 million records. But I'm just gonna go ahead and tell it to load directly into Excel. And da -da 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 -da. how cool is this? And there it is here in Excel, just like that. All 142,000 records are right here in Excel. I can sort until my heart's content. I can filter until the cows come home. I have all these opportunities now to build pivot tables and charts and graphs, and I'm never touching the SQL Server again, unless I want the latest and greatest data. Just come on up here and refresh, and it refreshes that view. The view refreshes the database, pulls it all back down here. Just think, someone who doesn't really want to have to learn all about SQL, we could send this spreadsheet to them and say, you know what, when you want the latest and greatest, just hit the refresh button. Just don't hit it all day long because that's kind of, you know, getting in the way of what we're really trying to do here. But nonetheless, there's your data. And how exciting is that? So we have spent some time learning about SQL and how we can speed it up so it doesn't affect just us. So we're, woo -woo, we're we've got a faster query. It affects so many people and that time is money. And uh, we have a way to affect that personally and as a group.